Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're going to talk about solving for the core of an exchange economy. Let's go. So consider the following economy with two consumers and two goods. Our economy is described by our consumers preferences, which are, you know, Cobb Douglas like, I mean, but you know, without the elasticities, they're just being multiplied together. Uh, a resource constraint where we have a, you know, there's a visible good, right, of X, right, which is there's only one unit of that and one unit of Y, which is fully divisible. And our initial endowments is one fourth and three fourths for consumer A of each X and Y respectively. And uh, for consumer B, he'll, he'll have three fourths of good X and one fourth of good Y. So the way that we're gonna go and solve this problem is that we're gonna go and follow these steps here. So step number one is that we're gonna note our consumer's utilities for, from just consuming the endowment. Step number two is that we're gonna to have to write out our optimality condition. Step number three is that we're gonna use our resource constraint to derive two versions of the contract curve in conjunction with our optimality condition. Step number four is that we're gonna using these contract curves, utility functions, and initial utilities that we got in step number one, we solve for the allocation which constitutes the core of the economy. And step five is that we're gonna define over what range does this core exist. So um, this step number five is gonna involve three steps. Uh, it's gonna include defining a contract curve, a resource constraint, and a range where the core is present. So step number one is that we're gonna note our consumer's utilities from consuming the endowment. Uh, that's just plug and chug, and we just get three all over 16 for each one of our consumers. Step number two is that we're gonna write out our optimality condition, which goes and comes down to this, where we have YA all over XA is equal to YB all over XB. And you know that's just the next step. Step number three is that we're gonna use our resource constraint to derive two versions of the contract curve. So just using the resource constraint, we can rewrite YB and XB as one minus YA all over one minus XA. And with a little bit of rearranging, we go and we find that XA is equal to YA. And by symmetry of preferences, we can say that our consumer B is gonna be consuming in the same sort of manner. Step number four is that we're gonna use our contract curves, utility function, and initial utilities to solve for the allocation which constitutes the core of our economy. So considering consumer A, we're gonna go and have this at XA times YA at its optimum. So this is you know, our optimum as determined by our contract curve. So this must be greater than or equal to our consumption from initial endowment. So this is just you know, a necessary uh, sort of condition for defining these points. And we go and we find that XA star, right, this optimal point must be greater than or equal to the square root of three all over four and by our equality, right, meaning that they are consumed, you know, exactly together in a complementary factor, uh, we're going to have the same sort of functional value. Uh, and since our preferences are symmetric, these are also going to be the values for XB and YB respectively. Step number five is that we need to define over what range and conditions does the core exist. So we're gonna first note that we have a contract curve, meaning that this is how uh, or where, you know, where along the path where our core goes and exists, right? It just defines, you know, the road where our consumers are going and consuming. That's, you know, really what a contract curve is. A resource constraint, which goes and defines the size of you know our economy in general size being defined in this context as the number of goods in motion and the core here uh that's going to be defined by this little thing in set notation so let's just go through it over here so we say that xa is on this closed interval it's going to be between these two values i know i put you know uh you know a little open bracket over there but this is just what i'm saying it's going to be uh between right square root of three all over four and one minus square root of three all over four and ya is also going to follow that pattern um, this will become a little bit more clear uh, when i go and show it in the picture on the next page so in terms of visualizing this core right we have our consumer a down in the bottom left and our consumer b up in the right and 
we have, you know, our initial, uh, you know, endowments, which have been shifted, you know, to these points over here. And this purple area here, right, this purple area here, that's going to be uh, the core of our economy, right? So that's going to be, uh, you know, if we were writing that in terms of XA, that's going to be between, you know, the square root of three all over four uh, and one minus three all over four, right? Because these are numbers. And that's going to be the same thing for YA as well, right? We can define it in terms of YB, but, you know, uh, a contract curve is just trying to go and, you know, understand um, how individuals are willing to negotiate uh, over a specific set of goods. So, um, I hope this video helps. Um, if there are any mistakes, like usual, uh, leave the comments, uh, you know, about what I can do to go and fix that. Or if there's any issues, I'll pin your comment. Uh, take care.